Suburban Sentinel here with a review on the Quirky Keltec Sub 2000 pistol caliber carbine. I believe it's helpful in any firearms review to have a basic understanding of the reviewer's perspective and experience level. My interest in firearms is almost exclusively for defensive purposes. I shoot to maintain proficiency with my weapons rather than for pleasure, and I have a relatively small collection of guns, each of which must earn its keep. My overall experience with firearms is about 40 years plus or minus. On the screen here is the Keltec Sub 2000 I purchased about a year and a half ago. As a matter of disclosure, I'm not affiliated with Keltec or any of its subsidiaries or any parent company. I'm not being compensated by Keltec or anybody else for this review. And the gun and any and all accessories were purchased at my own expense. And here comes Bella, my assistant review cat, who I do compensate with cans of cat food and cat treats. So could you please get out of the way? Thank you. I'll do a quick chamber check here and the gun is empty. Bella is very helpful. Now that we've dispensed with the preliminaries, let me get down to my reviewer's checklist, which I need because I am too dumb to remember all this stuff. Okay. As always, here in part one, we will do the form, fit, and function. Again, this is a pistol caliber carbine chambered in 9mm Luger. This rifle is short. Uh, as you see here, it's 29 and a half inches stem to stern and weighs only 4 pounds with no magazine. The gun is primarily made of Zytel with the working parts of it made out of high-grade steel. The buffer tube serves as a stock and the charging handle is unusual and that's located at the bottom of the tube. Keltec offers this carbine in both 9mm and 40 caliber Smith chamberings and the various models of this gun accept magazines from different manufacturers including Glock, Beretta, Smith & Wesson, and Sig Sauer. This particular model is the Glock compatible chambered in 9mm Luger. Now I'm not a kel fanboy. Uh, this is the only kel weapon I've ever owned. And in point of fact, uh, I believe it's the only kel weapon I've ever had the opportunity to shoot. The most notable feature of this carbine is that it folds in half. I'll try to demonstrate that on camera if Bella will help me. Essentially folding is you push down on the trigger guard to release the lock and then just give the barrel a smack. And it folds in half. And it's just about in half. Folded, the package is 16.1 inches long and 7 inches high. I'm not sure how wide. It's not that thick though. To put the weapon back in action, you simply press this catch forward. It unlocks the barrel from shoulder stock and just give it a good snap. And she's ready to go again. And so is Bella. Right, you're a good girl. The Keltec Sub 2000 feels like a toy, actually but the locking mechanism seems very stout. I have to say I'm very impressed with the way it locks into place for firing and then locks back against the buttstock for storage or transport. So let's move on to function. Uh, as far as accuracy goes, I am not the best judge of its ultimate accuracy levels. First, I'm not the greatest shot in the world, and I have not had the opportunity to run hundreds and hundreds of rounds through this weapon. But I can share with you my informal and inexpert accuracy experience. 
at eight yards, which I would consider close range for defensive purposes, I was getting about an inch and a half group taking my time. At medium range, which I consider about 50 yards, I was getting groupings that I could cover with the palm of my hand. Again, that's taking my time, but I'm not the best shooter in the world, and I believe the gun can do a lot better. I did do a little bit of shooting at 100 yards, which I would consider to be at or beyond the effective range of a nine millimeter handgun cartridge. And at that distance, I was getting groupings I could basically cover with a dinner plate, taking my time. Again, I'm not the best shooter in the world, far from it. And I believe that many of you, if not most of you, could do a lot better. And I'm certain the gun can outshoot my capabilities. But as they say, minute of bad guy performance at 50 yards is good enough for my purposes. By the way, for all the shooting I did, I used Spear Lawman 124 grain, nine millimeter. On to the sighting. Let me bring this in a little closer. The rear sight is a circular hood that itself folds down when you fold the weapon in half. Let's see if I can get that on camera a little bit. The front sight is made out of Zytel and has a piece of high-vis plastic shrouded by more Zytel. The sight is, in my opinion, the weakest point of this carbine and a source of common criticism in this particular gun. The front sight actually works fairly well for picking up targets, but it does appear to be rather flimsy. Although the rear sight is fixed, the front sight is adjustable for both windage and elevation. But adjusting the front sight appears to me to be a real Rube Goldberg affair. Adjusting for windage involves changing the pressure on this high visibility piece of plastic by moving the screws on either side of the front sight in sequence. Adjusting for elevation involves loosening the screws and then moving this piece of plastic up and down. I have not adjusted the sights on this rifle simply because it was close enough at 50 yards and my intended purpose for this gun is for use at essentially eight yards with a maximum of 50 yards. And to be honest with you, I just didn't feel like fooling with this crazy adjustment system for what little benefit I could possibly get out of it. A fair percentage of sub 2000 owners elect to ditch the factory front sight for aftermarket sites, which I believe are much better, but do add substantial cost to the weapon. I'm going to leave the front sight alone for now just because it's suitable for my needs. Moving on to the trigger. Uh, the trigger I find kind of spongy on the uptake, but then the brake is reasonably clean. And as this was not designed to be a precision rifle, I think the trigger is fine and I personally wouldn't touch it. Moving on to ergonomics, uh, this carbine is not very pleasant for me to shoot. First with an overall length of under 30 inches and me being about six foot three, uh, it's hard to get a comfortable firing position. Uh, someone of much shorter stature would probably do better. In addition, the buffer tube for a stock doesn't give you much of a cheek weld. The buttstock is just a piece of Zytel. It's not a big deal as far as recoil goes because you're only shooting nine millimeter pistol rounds, but the hard plastic tends to slip off your shoulder. But that particular issue can be easily mitigated with a, some type of uh, tape. This is a blowback operated 
semi-automatic weapon and the charging handle is located in kind of an unusual and somewhat unnatural spot. In addition, the charging handle is quite small. You can barely just get one finger around it and the recoil spring is quite stiff. So it does take a fair amount of effort to charge the weapon. There is no last shot hold open. However, the charging handle can be manually locked back if the cat gets out of the way for range inspections or for working on your rifle. It has a unremarkable cross bolt safety, which works well, no problems with that. The stock front hand guard uh, is not too big around works well for a variety of hand sizes. My wife, who's five foot three, does get a, a good solid foregrip on this carbine. And again, the Sub 2000 can be folded with a little fanfare, just a matter of pushing down the trigger guard and giving the foregrip a little smack and folding it back over the top. One very nice feature about this particular weapon is that there is a built-in lock. Let's see if I can get that to focus. So the weapon can be locked in the folded position and the key comes with the rifle, of course. I have not used the lock yet, but it's an excellent feature for legal compliance in transporting the rifle. Recoil on the 9mm Sub-2000 is very manageable. Not quite as light as a 22, but manageable nonetheless, at least in 9mm. I have not had an opportunity to shoot any of the 40 caliber versions. So that's the basic overview of the form, fit, and function of the kel Sub-2000. And I'll pick up on the logistics of the weapon in part two of this three-part video series. And I'm sure Bella will be here to help as well. This is the Suburban Sentinel. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and shoot safely, everybody.